Now, let's look at what's happening with Nord Stream and this gas pipeline. The Swedish Coast Guard has reportedly found a fourth leak now along the pipeline, leaking gas into the Baltic Sea. Comes as the US Navy offers its support to protect European energy infrastructure if needed. Well, for more on this and other developments around the war in Ukraine, joining us now is Con Coughlin, Defence and Foreign Affairs Editor for the Daily Telegraph. Thank you very much for joining us. Just explain, what do you think is happening with this pipeline? We've had the head of the European Commission, Ursula von der Leyen, and NATO saying this is sabotage, but it's very complicated to actually investigate. It certainly is, particularly as uh, there's still gas spewing out of the pipeline uh, into the Baltic Sea. So I, I fear it will be some time before we have a proper examination of the pipeline to see precisely the cause of this. But, I mean, everybody's pointing the finger of suspicion at Moscow, at Vladimir Putin, at the Ukrainian president, Vladimir Zelensky, has made it quite clear that this is straight out of the Russian playbook to intimidate uh, Europe into dropping its support for Ukraine, because if it continues supporting Ukraine, then the lights will go out. I mean, it, it's just classic bully boy tactics by Vladimir Putin. So that, that's how it looks. Um, and of course, if, the, if that is what's happened, then we have to look at you know, how we prevent further attacks on our energy infrastructure. Because uh, earlier this week, Poland opened a new pipeline to Norway. Uh, previously, N Poland relied on Russia for its gas, is now getting its gas from Norway. So, question, would, would, the, would the Russians dare to blow up this new po pipeline to deprive Poland, is, which is one of the more vociferous opponents of Russia's invasion of Ukraine, and turn their lights out? So, you know, th there are a lot of security implications around this incident. Con, one of our viewers has been in touch with us this morning, David. Morning to you, David, who says, why would Putin blow up Russia's pipeline when he can just turn off the gas? Well, <laughs> quite. But I think, I, I mean, yeah, when you're dealing with Putin, you try and apply uh, rationality. Um, if Putin was rational, he wouldn't have invaded Ukraine. Um, and, and David's quite right. He could just turn off the, the gas, which is what he's done, by the way. But this is an act of intimidation. You know, the, 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 the images of gas bubbling through the Baltic Sea, there's, there's a kilometre-wide kilometer gas spill, if that's the right word, in the Baltic Sea. I mean, this sends a very bleak message to Europe and, and the outside world that, you know, the Russians have the capability to do this kind of thing. Of course, we have to, we have to couch this with, with, with an allegation because we just don't know what happened. And of course, we could all look very silly if it's just a, a technical fault that, that's, that's happened. But it, it seems very unlikely at this point. We're saying categorically, they say this is sabotage. They also say uh, if they can conclude that, they will respond with the strongest possible terms. When we look at language like that, what do they actually mean? Well, I think at the moment um, we're, we're talking about more sanctions, more isolation. I mean, the... I suppose the, the upside of what is going on over Ukraine is that however Putin looked at it, he's, he's, he's losing. He's losing the war in Ukraine. You know, overnight, we've had reports the Ukrainian forces have made uh, more advances in Luhansk, um, which completely undermines Putin's attempts to annex the territory. He can't annex the territory, doesn't hold. Um, and he's also losing the economic war. Um, he's trying to hide it, but the, the Russian economy is becoming a basket case. And the more, the more aggressive he is towards the West, the more the West will react and isolate Russia to the point where they can't sell their gas and oil at, at proper market rates to the outside world. And that will bankrupt the Russian economy. Expectation, Con, just finally, is that tomorrow Russia will announce uh, sort of formal annexation of 15% of Ukraine's territory. What does the West do then? Well, hopefully ignore it. Um, I mean, the West has can condemn this. The United Nations has condemned this as a sham exercise. And we've seen the images over the weekend of people being taken at gunpoint to the ballot boxes. So the result of the, this so-called referendum or referendums, plural, um, was, was not in dispute before it happened. But this is, again, it's an act of desperation by Putin. If he could hold these territories with the security forces, he wouldn't need to have the referendums.
because he can't trust the, the security and military, and a lot of them have just run away, then he has to have these sham referendums, and he says that this will tie them to Russia permanently. But nobody beyond Moscow, or perhaps even Belarus, actually believes this. So I hope that the West does not be intimidated by this and carries on supporting Ukraine, because the best way out of this is military victory for Ukraine. You're, you're not worried that Putin may frame it as uh, an attack then on Russian sovereign territory from their point of view, and then he uses that as a, as a pretext to using tactical nuclear weapons? Well, that's what he said. Um, am I worried about it? Not particularly. I think it's an elaborate game of bluff. And I think he's, he's been made well aware by Washington and others that if he starts playing around with tactical nuclear weapons in Ukraine, the consequences are going to be catastrophic for Russia. So, you know, again, it's, we have to see this, in my view, as an act of de desperation by the Russian leader, and we shouldn't back off.